This episode of Action with Podcast is brought to you by our gold partner, A Star Financial Solutions UK, who'll support you on your journey to expand your property portfolio. Thanks to our silver partner, TapTap Send, with great rates, zero fee, and instant transfers, sending money to Nepal has never been easier. Use the code Action10 for a ten pound bonus. Download the app today. Tap tap and send now. Big mention to our silver partner, New Lakshmi Jewelers, home to a stunning range of jewelry collection and timeless pieces from the heart of Aldershot. Our bronze partners, Nepal Authentic Dining, where delicious Nepali food is served at Shepherd's Bush and Boston Manor, and our bronze partner, Nepali Music Festival UK 2022, taking place at the Harrow Leisure Centre on December 16 with Trishna Gurung, Ekdev Limbu, Sabin Rai, and the Pharaoh. Enjoy the episode. Welcome to another episode of Action with Podcast, and today I have with me Yuvan Black. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you. Thank you for having me. How was your journey in? Because I know it took a bit of a while. Yeah, uh -huh. it was actually just a one-hour journey, just but we got stuck in traffic. You know, it was a one-way road. Um, people were arguing, uh -huh. trying to get in, but yeah, uh, we were very patient, and luckily we got through. So yeah. And now you're here. Yes. Right. Um, you know, like normally when I think about you, uh, I think about the group. You know, I don't think of you, <laughs> I don't quite think of you um, guys as a kind of singular thing. Yeah. So I think about, oh, okay, Jay, Zach, um, Yuvan, uh, Tisiri, so and so, you know, and then uh, the whole kind of meta metanoia squad. So um, it's quite rare to be able to get this opportunity to sit down with you. So uh, I feel like, you know, I I'm quite excited. Yeah, uh, for me, it's a, it's a good opportunity to express myself. You know, mm -hmm. normally we're... It's always Jay or either just three of us, you know. Yeah. But I, even the interviews that I've seen of, you know, you and the team, it's always been like quite a long, you know, big couch <laughs> with like all three, four yeah. people. Yeah. Yeah. We, we, the thing is like when we're in a group, uh, we have, you know, similar mindsets, but sometimes mm -hmm. we have different opinions. Yeah. But, you know, I think this is a good opportunity to, you know, have my take on. Of this. course, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, and to kind of get started with, I mean, you guys have been very busy, um, you know, uh, dropping at least uh, three songs already now. Yeah. Um, Saiho, Django, and Kursani. Yeah. And this is all from r and Bop. Yes, r and Bop. That's a collaborative album between you and Jay. And Jay, yes. Yeah. It's a, it's a collaborative album, but uh, what I would say is like everyone in the team was involved. Mm -hmm. So it's more like not just us, it's about everyone else. You know, it helps everyone as well for their portfolio, you know, their profile, what they need to do, like dancers, mm -hmm. editors, you know, doing PRs, you know, project <clears throat> management, everything. Yeah. So, yeah. so now that you're already kind of um, seeing the outcome, seeing how people are responding to the music videos, to the uh, the songs, um, to the kind of visuals that you're putting out, um, how are you kind of like, um, how's the response been for you? Uh in all complete honesty, I think it's like mixed. Mm -hmm. um, I'd say um, our fans, they love it. But you've got this other, like, you know, 25% that maybe they're still not used to the sound. Because it's not very normal for um, this kind of sound to be Nepalese music. Mm -hmm. It's a mm -hmm. bit different. It's very, uh, very hip hop, very British. The slangs that we use and the way we write our lyrics is completely different. So it's not like what we did before. Mm -hmm. um, before it was much more easier to understand, but now we've got more British slang in there and a bit more uh, British style. So it's a little bit difficult to digest, but I think in time, maybe people will understand, you know? Yeah, I think um, I, I can definitely feel that. I can definitely see that in terms of the change mm -hmm. and the kind of uh, new path that you guys are on and trying to kind of steer away from... Um, not steer away, but also like you guys did what you did so well. It's almost like now let's try something new. Yeah. And I feel like that's what we're seeing. Yeah. Um, and and it, even like the music and um, the beats have are quite different from what we would have heard from your kind of previous hits, like, um, you know, Time China or um, Martuki Kya Ho. I know yeah. they had very kind of, you know, I guess it was much more, normal for Nepali listeners to expect that, right? Yeah, I, I would say uh, even in that phase, we were still experimenting. Mm -hmm. We were kind of, uh, whatever was on trend at that time, that's the type of music we would go for. Yeah. But working on this album, I think this is more us. Because mm -hmm. when we released, like for me, when I was Aizen, when I released um, Time Channel with Jay, for me, that was still a learning curve. You yeah. know? I didn't expect uh, Time Channel to blow up like that like mm -hmm. you know it was it was still a learning curve for me but now um you know for four or five years i've been doing music now i kind of know what i want and what kind of artist i want to be 
um, you know, it, identity comes along, you know, uh, once you keep doing music, you know, you take inspirations from different type of sounds that you listen to, you know, Afro, Korean music, mm. you got American music, we're all influenced and we're all dived into this culture. And eventually when you keep doing music, you kind of change your style and you adapt this identity that you have. And I think right now, r Bop is all about that, you know? Yeah. It's more about just having fun. It's nothing serious. Yeah. Just have fun and enjoy music. Yeah. I think that's how life should be as well. Because, you know, life is long and we're going to hop from different things, right? We're going to like, you know, right now we might feel r and Bop, um, but in a few years time, there might be a new genre forming that we don't even know right now yeah and yeah i'm gonna take that question back to i mean the first time that i actually saw you you were participating in this contest called tea fest <laughs> and, and and at that moment i I, mean, I think there was there was a lot of cover song situation going on back then right because it was like a contest yeah um if you were to if you okay if you have to like think back to that time mm-hmm. what would you have said that your genre was then or you know who did that version of you then want to, wanted to kind of you know be so that was that was me that was so got limbo back in the days uh-huh. <laughs> that was me just <laughs> I, at that time we're I think, on version three now are we <laughs> yeah version three i think let me bring it back a little bit more before that actually yeah. when i initially started music it was not something very big it was actually very small and very uh very childish i would say not even childish it's very uh, natural for someone to uh, you know impress a girl you know, mm-hmm. that was the main thing why I used to sing because my oh my co- god, who is she? <laughs> <laughs> this, this was back in this was back uh. in Hong Kong. You know, I I used to do music because I wanted to impress people because my uh. my confidence wasn't great. Uh. I was not very good with speaking to uh you know a girl like you know yeah. um but I think music itself helped me a lot build my confidence mm-hmm. it helped me in many ways like you know it's it's crazy you know people don't think about little things but music actually changed my life. You know, it's crazy. Mm. Um, and going along there, you know, I would say the genre that I'm doing at that time would probably be pop, you know? Yeah. Because that time, Bruno Mars was really popular, uh-huh. you know? Bruno Mars, all these, you know, Jason Derulo, Chris Brown, yeah. all these artists. A lot of, uh, at that time, a lot of uh, Asian artists was coming along doing this acoustic thing. Yes, you yes. Know, uh, what was what YouTube was blowing out yeah. and there was like, yeah, a lot, very kind of the acoustic sound yeah. was very popular. I'm sure you know some of them as well. Uh, Joseph Vincent, is it Jason Vincent or Joseph Vincent? Yeah. Yeah, you yeah. have like Timothy De La Ghetto. Uh, of course, yes. Th- these guys were like, you know, inspiration for me. You know, who I am right now and what I'm doing right now. These were all artists that helped me grow as a person because I used to look up to them. And, you know, the, uh, what they used to do for me in my music, it, you know, it just helped me develop a lot. You know, it helped me play guitars, drums, bass. The only yeah. thing I haven't played is piano, but maybe in the future. But yeah. Yeah, we'll wait for 4.0. Yeah. <laughs> so, okay. So in terms of like the, you know, the iterations of you, um, yeah, you know, you've been black. So I wanted to ask, uh, you already mentioned the former name as well. I'm just like really careful with that, with, with the names, because I don't want to like, because I feel like I, let me just be current and not uh, mention anything. But obviously, you know, I think that they've been a great signifier of the different phases in your life and the songs and the hits that have come out of it you know mm. uh, so you've been black how did that name come about and you know what is it what does it mean because i'm not too sure by the way uh, it's, it actually doesn't mean anything to be oh honest. really it does <laughs> not mean anything but from what i know if you google it wow, was... that is so deep <laughs> yeah. wow. so meaningless i didn't want i didn't want to <laughs> you know you know i don't want to deep it too much you know i uh-huh. think um an artist's name is uh, it's really up to the person what they want to put into, you know? Yeah. The meaning is really up to you. Yeah. Like, think about it, Post Malone, what the hell does that mean? <clears throat> yeah. <laughs> yeah, right, exactly. I mean, yeah. <laughs> yeah, what the hell does that mean? <laughs> you have no idea what that means, exactly. Yeah. So it's really up to you, you know? It's uh-huh. up to the person's persona yeah. and the person's uh, presence on uh, the music video and uh, obviously on stage. Mm-hmm. And you are, you know, around people as well. I think that's what you in black means, you know? It's just being you. Nice. Yeah. I like it. Yeah. <laughs> I, mean, I definitely thought a lot more harder than that. You know? yeah. <laughs> I was like, what is you been black me? And then I also Googled, so I, I typed in Aizen, um, A-I-Z-E-N. And yeah. then I was thinking, I wonder why he changed it. And then when I searched it, um, I don't know. Did Aizen come from some cartoon? Yeah, it, it did. Oh, okay. Because I was just like, oh, he must have thought the cartoon keeps popping up. So I need to change my name. <laughs> That's no, that's thought. that's also one of the reasons why. Oh, you know? okay. Because like whenever I searched Eisen, it was just like you know I used to love this anime called Bleach. Yeah, yeah. yeah I used to love. It. I used to watch it all the time. I'm a huge anime fan. You know? Yeah. Um, so I thought, you know what, Eisen, uh, let's put 
I and Zen. Mm. I means love, Zen means calm state of mind that kind of represents me. Oh my god, wow, Th- there was complete meaning there. <laughs> yeah, there, there, was, there was complete... <laughs> you flipped the switch. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, but no, 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 it's... Uh, it, that's what happened basically. In the beginning, mm. when I thought about Eisen, I thought really long and hard, you know, okay, are, am I sure? Yeah, I'm sure, I'm sure. I asked everyone, I was like, mm. does Eisen sound good? They were like, yeah. But then, you know, as I went along, I was like, ah, after Time China and Daddy, and I was just like doing music, I was like, ah, maybe I shouldn't keep Eisen, I should change my name, mm-hmm. go with a different persona. My sound is changing. Yeah. I used to sing a lot more before, mm-hmm. but now I'm like sort of doing this melodic rap. You know, it's not exactly rap rap i wouldn't call myself a rapper yeah but i would definitely say i'm more of a melodic rapper singer you know mm-hmm. slash whatever i'm semi-producer or whatever it is yeah but yeah that's exciting i feel like this defines the current chapter and i think it, the, the, it's a there's a distinction from like you know the, the music the style and um we can see that we can see all of that as well the videos are so like there's so much creative um elements to it and i know that there's a team of you um you know working together um and i just wanted to ask like how does that brainstorming process um uh unravel itself because there's so many people there i'm assuming there's lots of ideas and how like you know what part do you play when there's like you know jemima jay zach <laughs> um and so many other you know dancers and and so on you know what you're asking the right question right now because i don't really talk about this a lot outside but you know uh normally when me and jay it's normally me and jay who's working on the music side of things you know because we collaborate a lot he does most of the beat side of things mm-hmm. the editing side of things i normally just think about the concept I'm that little person who just gives that little push. You know, mm. okay, we have this song. A very important person, it sounds like. Yeah, people don't really think about it, but <laughs> I don't know, maybe, maybe not. I just like to give people a little bit more motivation to mm-hmm. what they're doing, you know, um, come up with the idea, the concept, um, um, you know, the sound, the direction that we should go for. Um, mm-hmm. It's not really written on, you know, the credit side of things, yeah. but I like doing that, you yeah. know, just giving that little push. I'm not the main um, guy who creates it, but I just kind of give the idea, the mm-hmm. concept, the the visionary, I guess. But yeah, I don't know what you want to call it. But yeah, now that's really important. I think you know, when, when, once you have that, then the other people run with it because th- then their parts come to life, right? But yeah. without that concept, you know, it's like you can't just run with it because you yeah. have nothing to run. Yeah, you with. can't you can't just go around and be like, all right, I'm gonna play a G chord today. Yeah, and I'm gonna make a music video. Two persons sitting down, you know, they're in love, mm-hmm. whatever. It can't be like that anymore. Yeah. I think we need to think a little bit outside the box when we're creating music. Uh, it might take time for people to understand, but you have to trust your art. Mm-hmm. You have to believe in what you do. And eventually I think people will understand. And it's it comes with time as well. Yeah. And I think like along the way, you know, you um, from working by yourself, working, finding, you know, musical friends, like, you know, you found Jay at a house party. I think that's what you told me. Right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then, you know, and, and along the way, you know, uh, you guys have... Um, continued finding many other kind of talents uh you know metanoia has plenty um but the music videos now it's kind of like unlocking a different chapter uh the talents that we see in the music videos and in the makings uh it's not just limited to the nepali community but there's so many non-nepali people that you guys have brought in and you know i'm sure now they're adopting um they're learning new dance routines, uh, at least the word Saiho, <laughs> yeah. Kursani and stuff like that. You know, so yeah. how did that make you feel? Um, you know, I'm, I'm, this is something like, I think, I don't know if people talk about this a lot, but you know, uh, we love to help the Nepalese community. But I think uh, during this phase, I think we wanted to learn something from here. Mm-hmm. The talents that are like, you know, these young, talented people, you know, we've got these new dancers that we're working with i think we learn a lot from them yeah you know how this younger generation works because i'm i'm almost 30 now and there are some things that i still need to learn from the younger generations and that's so important Mm -hmm. to keep yourself up to date with the music the style the sound what's going on right now we can't always be like all right this it has worked for me for the last five years i'm gonna keep doing it it shouldn't be like that you should as an artist and as a musician you you should always try to find something different Mm -hmm. something that's not out there and uh you know there are so many things that, you know, sometimes people tell me, you know, oh, why don't you make songs like Bibul Chetri or Sazan Raj Vaida? But I'm not that kind of artist anymore. Mm-hmm, you know, mm-hmm. I've moved on from that. I want to do something different. I want to do something different outside the box. Even if people don't like it, mm-hmm. I'm going to still trust it. <clears throat> and I'm so happy that, you know, the team around me, yeah, you know, uh, Nepalese, you know, black, white, whatever, you know, yeah. different cultures 
like you know different Asians. You learn a lot from them. You know, you learn uh-huh. a lot of different cultures, a lot of different style, a lot of way of singing as well. Yeah, yeah I think. And you're also taking so uh, you're also. T- I mean, you know, you've you've grown up in Hong Kong, UK, and so on. But also, ultimately, like you know, you have your roots back to Nepal and you're taking that all of that with you to these different cultures to these different people do you get what I mean I feel like yeah. a lot of the times us Nepali people we stick within our own bubble and it's so mm-hmm. comfortable to do that um, but you know there's there's very few people who actually take their music their movies and their writing beyond that bubble of the Nepali community in the UK yeah. and with this current recent movement of the batch of music videos and songs that you guys are doing I see that happening and and it's quite nice because you know this is this is when you know we're taking it outside because it's like how um yeah so that, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was just like I'm not gonna say anything but yeah so I think that that's really nice to see but what are some of like the um you know everyone's different uh, what are some of the kind of like interesting things that you found you know working with Nepali people um whether they're from the UK or Nepali people from Nepal because you guys have had quite a bit of experience um touring and working with different sets of organizers and so on <laughs> and then and, and then creative talents from here as well so are you talking about people nepalis people here yeah let's start with that because yeah, let, otherwise let's start the, with that yeah that would be a big pot yeah, yeah i think um i don't know how it's like right now but before mm-hmm. when i was starting off music there used to be a lot of uh, restrictions with a lot of uh, nepalis people because you know they would be afraid to step out of their comfort zone you know mm-hmm. you and me like any any everybody else we work a nine to five we go to university mm-hmm. um, that's so important to us but um you know being in the creative side you know some of the family you know might not be yeah. as lenient you know of course yeah it might be a little bit difficult because we have our families coming over you know for us to have mm-hmm. a good future and like when we put something into uh our mind into the creative side sometimes you know it might not work out you know yeah like, like Back in the days, maybe um, the facilities and the things that we have around might not, you know, support them. But now we have so much opportunity and I think people should take that step. And I don't know, I think the young people now are much more forward. Yeah. Definitely a lot more um, open-minded towards these you know, mm-hmm. creative things. But, you know, I, that's what I feel right now. I, I, don't, I don't know what's happening. I can't really say this is this, this is that, you know. Yeah. I, but I feel like this is what's going on right now. And it's mm-hmm. it's good. It's good. It's really good. I really like it. A nice <laughs> diplomatic answer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, um, yeah. No, I, I agree with your point about like kind of. The, I, I feel like the Gen Zs, you know, the Nepali Gen Zs right now, in terms of those that are kind of eighteen to twenty three, twenty four. I feel like they're much more. Um, they're much more. Um, I guess they have the space and maybe um, uh, the privilege as well to be able to kind of, you know, actually, you know, I want to do this. Or oh, actually, I don't want to work. There, there are a lot of people who are like, yeah. no, like you know, it's not good for me right now, and so yeah. on. But I think even like when you think about it, the people who are kind of like nearing their 30s or 30 pluses, you know, they just kind of got thrown in the deep end and just do it. So it was, it may have been a slightly bigger battle with the parents saying, actually, no, I really want to do this. Yeah. Um. So you touched on it. So a lot of our parents want something which is much more like, okay, this is set, you know, um, Monday to Friday, <laughs> get that um, money at the end of the month and it's going to pay the bills and, uh, you know, life life continues and that that's the cycle. Yeah. So I think the worry comes to like, you know, doing something that is slightly creative. Um. It's almost like, when does the paycheck come, <laughs> right? So it's like that, that passion versus that um, something which is much more right there. Like for you and uh, in your kind of um, household setting, how easy or difficult was it? Or like, I don't know if it's still a conversation, but like, um, you know. I wouldn't say I have any problems with my family, but mm-hmm. um, the main problem was it was money. Mm-hmm. You know, money is a huge factor, like when you're doing music, because you're yeah. investing your time your money and you know living in the UK time and money is so important you know it, it pretty much runs your life whatever yeah. you do you know you got to book studios you got to do this you got to look at health and safety oh my god yeah. there's a lot of things that you have to think about and people don't understand it's not just about being creative I'm like I've always talked about this with the boys like even you know with a lot of younger artists as well like the most fun part is being the being creative you know mm-hmm. it's so enjoyable because you love doing that but the most annoying part is doing the legwork. Yeah. You know, the legwork is the most annoying part. You know, all these uh, license, or getting beats, you know, getting a yeah. place to book, finding people. These are all really, really difficult things to do. And, um, you know, I think going forward, for my advice to the younger people is get yourself a team. Mm-hmm. Get yourself a team. Create a team. 
and work work with them for the next five six years, and I'll I'll, I'll guarantee your skills will improve, and your team will be much better as well. Mm. From my experience, yeah. yeah. That's quite. I mean, you, yeah. Realistically, I think money is such a huge thing because a lot of the times it's like, where is that money coming from? Because、um, when you start doing things, you have such an, a lovely idea, and then you're like, okay, how do I get this done now? And then you need money, right? <laughs>、yeah. And then that's when you're like, oh, where, where is this money going to come from? Yeah,、right? it's it's hard. It's hard. Yeah,、um, you need a lot of support. You know, you need sponsors. You know, your nine to five is not going to support you to do this music video. So you need、yeah. a group of team to actually. Help you fund the fund the fund the music videos. You know you need a、yeah. team. Like my one month paycheck is not going to pay for a music video. Is yeah. It? So you need a team. So and like you you spoke about sponsors. You know, like in your、um, previous、uh, music. You know that that that、uh, you and team have created.、Um, Time to you know who Sia Moi Chang and various others. There's a lot of Nepali languages, and there's.、Uh, I believe you tapped back into some. Um, support from Nepali businesses and so on, possibly. But and,、yeah. and okay, getting to the point, Nepal has been sponsors of about. That's right. No support, power, no collage. I like the soft, soft story. I mean, soft loan, soft loan. So that whereas here, boss, it's a you create that case. And like, where does one unlock that support from? <laughs> it it it's a.、Uh, f- From my experience, it's it's gonna be a long journey.、Mm. You're gonna have to ask a lot of people, you know, because、yeah. a lot of people might not support your vision.、Mm. You know, their businesses might not go hand in hand with what you do. Yeah, and you have to, like, you know, you have to sell it in a way that you know it's gonna work. Like, you know, we're gonna、yeah. we're gonna promote you like this and that. But it it takes long. You know, right now we're currently on 200k subscribers.、Mm-hmm. It looks more visually appealing as well because we got more viewers. But people who are starting off, it'll be a little bit difficult. So. What I would say is just focus on being creative first、mm-hmm. with what you have, and then later on push forward. You know,、mm-hmm. step out there, talk to people, like you know, communicate, talk to people who's already actually doing it. You、mm-hmm. know, I tell a lot of like、um, the younger, you know, younger buyers, the rubainis, that like talk to people.、Mm-hmm. You have to talk to people because we're very reserved. You know,、mm-hmm. we, I I feel like personally we're very reserved. We don't we don't like talking about these things, but I think we should we shouldn't be afraid. Like if you really believe in something, then you have to go get it. Yeah, you know, it doesn't have to be about money, but if you really believe in your music, then just go do it because it's gonna make you happy once、mm-hmm. you finish it, right? Yeah, yeah. no, th- no, that's very important. And、yeah. um, hopefully, anyone who's listening and listening to you solo for the first time, <laughs> um, that will give people an opportunity to really kind of like,、um, actually, I should. I know, you know, a lot of the times when we talk, we we tend to gloss over the kind of real fine details, um, that are required to deliver. You know, we we talk about how was the success, the video looks so good, good, Kalko. That we we don't really think about the struggles, Kalko. Yeah. yeah. Um. Or 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 what it takes, because I guess life is a bit of a ongoing struggle. <laughs> Yeah,、um, you know, you and me were both creatives.、Mm-hmm. We have our own struggles. You know, we、mm-hmm. have our own, you know, difficult times, good times. There's always going to be up and downs. And a lot of people,、uh, I wouldn't say a lot of people.、Uh, that's the wrong way to say it. But I think some people think that we're well off. You know,、mm-hmm. we're not. We're、mm-hmm. not well off. Oh my god, yeah, yeah, we're not well off at all. We're working nine to five every day. All of my boys, all my all my team members, we work nine to five.、Mm-hmm. We only get two to three days to be creative. Yeah, that's the only time we get away from all these. <laughs> I got it. Yeah, all these nonsense, and you know, just focus on music. Do you sometimes think because, like, today is a Saturday? I don't know when this video is gonna come out, but you know, like, <laughs> the, when you're working, you're like working switched on and doing something. You know, whether it's like、uh, wherever you are, you're working. And this was how it's saying with you. As soon as you like switch off your work, then you're thinking, "Oh my God, my podcast going to be so is this too?" But the man said, "Like, he's going to be so hard." You know, all this thing happens,、yeah. and sometimes you just think. Oh my God, company Ali kiti thore gare wen. Since mere dimag la Ali dere creative wen. Time pao thi alanta, aina. So I can think about new ideas, new concepts, or I can think about how do we jazz this up. Not the better. Like even that creative、um, brain of yours is not getting the space and time it deserves. And sometimes this is when I think. Aye,、eh? this is when I think. Oh, nepa ma gare wen. It's aye. Buru kam lagari kiti mani kano pukti ala. Kano pukti ala. I'm tired of kisa. Ali kiti sote rai. No, oru kura mani aoti alanta. And maybe I would be around some creative minds too, so I could think things rather than like you know hopping from one thing to the other, one thing to the other. Okay. Yeah. Does that something? Does that play on play on your mind? Uh, uh, can you rephrase that last one? I didn't get that last one. It was just really confusing. <laughs> Hopping and wh- are you just laughing? <laughs> yeah, I'm like, well, what is this guy saying? <laughs> I'm like, what you mean hopping? <laughs> no, no, I mean, 
when you're just okay when you when you have like a you know job that you need to do right yeah um sometimes i feel like you don't get enough time to kind of let that creative juices flow and uh, the only time that you have left is that you actually now literally need to go and shoot or go and film i know ani i feel like it's really important that that uh time to manifest the creative pursuits uh we safeguard that that when you're working monday to friday or long shifts it's almost like it's never a great time to you know it's not enough to give that part of your brain to grow okay yeah, absolutely it's not mm. enough time you know you need you need time to be creative you need to think a little bit you need to just be in a relaxed place you know yeah cuz my struggles when i was you know uh i was i was i'm sure a lot of people in farmer and older shot know this that i i used to work in 3 <laughs> oh, okay, and yeah. used to come around and see me work uh-huh. right 9 to 5 i'm talking to people every day as a sales person you know i'm yeah. talking i'm physically tired as well oh my god yeah and being physically tired and creatively tired together really exhausts your brain mm-hmm, you mm-hmm. just don't want to do anything yeah it's really really tiring it is a struggle definitely mm. you you definitely need time just even working on this album uh, rm bop like it was a struggle just mm. working coming back and all that stuff it took us uh from december until now and i'm just today actually yesterday no yeah today at 2 a.m. i uploaded the album so it's going to mm. be coming out soon mm. that's finally finished oh that's exciting yeah, so yeah well done to you guys oh thank you yeah but yeah go check the album out too <laughs> yeah so the album will be out three songs are already up online you can already stream it and then the rest will follow soon yes yeah and um on that note i just wanted to ask as well you um i don't know when this video is going to come up <laughs> but basically australia tour <laughs> so yeah. yeah so the australia tour happens happened in <laughs> last <laughs> <and> on <laughs> okay australia tour august when are you guys flying out um we're flying on the 8th so monday so it'll be oh, um, so exciting it's soon it's just like in in 2 days in 2 days at the 6th something yeah that's monday bro i don't even have time yeah. you know i don't even know if i have a flight because uh-huh. i was thinking about the album just yesterday and i'm uh-huh. finally free <laughs> as long as you have your tickets and your passport ready or yeah. you know hopefully somebody's managing that so <laughs> yes uh, yes yeah, somebody so this is going to be second time is it yes yeah, second time the first time wasn't done properly um but yeah, do you want to elaborate do you want to expand on that the first like, there's time, a story <laughs> uh, there is a little bit of a story there yeah it's so funny but yeah <laughs> there's a little bit of a story but i don't know if anyone's done this before but i feel like it's always us that do this kind of ridiculous like you know <laughs> ridiculous schedules and stuff so uh-huh. uh me jay zack we had a show for just one night mm-hmm. in australia mm. it was a 30 hour long flight just for one night oh <laughs> just for one night and you know why it was one night Why? because of work. <laughs> oh. So yeah, I had to um basically take an early leave. <clears throat> mm. I normally finish at 5. That's when the office is shut, yeah. right? So I I left at 2 saying to my manager that, "Okay, I got to fly in Australia. I got to shoot." <laughs> yeah. Uh-huh. Pack my clothes for two like basically two days, but it was one night. Um and then we flew off for one night. I came back and then went back to work. <laughs> Oh. So that that's that's sort of what happened. So we only did Sydney at that time. It was yeah. a good experience, but it was for And what? that was when you guys filmed above average, I know. Yeah. So that was an amazing one night in Sydney. That <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It's oh crazy. Yeah. We got our music- I, I feel like there should have been a music video of, of the 30 hour journey. <laughs> <laughs> That's a long way to like I feel like that's a long journey yeah. too. It, it was a very long journey and me um Jay um I think it was me and Jay who were really really drunk before we f- uh, we, we flew because we knew like mm-hmm. our sleep patterns were going to get like yeah messed up so we were like okay let's drink as much as you can until we get like sleepy once we're in the f- interesting approach I mean like there must have been a transit somewhere. <laughs> there was no transit. Oh. Well, I don't think oh, there was okay. any transit. I think th- going back I, i can't remember actually i think going back there was no transit so yeah, it was a, okay. a straight 30 hours in the plane just chilling we were yeah. drunk and we were just so stupid as well because we were not in our senses thankfully mm-hmm. zach took care of us but yeah it was it was a, that's good you had a safe person yeah we had we had zach to look after us yeah okay so what are you looking forward to this time round going back to like you, you get to do australia second time 2.0 i think um I'm looking forward for the show obviously. Mm-hmm. I'm a huge foodie so I'm going to be taking a lot of, you know, buy a lot of snacks. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But yeah, I'm I'm excited. I just want to know uh what kind of people 
out there you know what yeah. kind of people are out there and um especially the nepalese community because i haven't seen enough i've only been there for a night one night mm -hmm. and i heard a lot of students uh from nepal go to australia yes so i'm excited i'm, I'm sure it's going to be a different kind of experience but yeah we'll see i i don't really have any expectations you know i don't mm. like keeping like you know i'm oh this show is going to be sick it's not <clears> like that i just want to go there want to give my 150 percent 200 percent whatever yeah let's go out there and give it your all and just have fun get to know people connect you know connect mm. with different artists if there's any artists out there you know just feel free reach out you know i'm, yeah. I'm more than happy to have a conversation mm -hmm. i'm excited to see um lil rock you know mm -hmm, if i mm -hmm. get to see shashant casey with him then it'll be dope as well but yeah you know, it's, it's oh it'll be amazing it'll yeah. be amazing um you know australia has quite a lot of very kind of that young slash young adult population of Nepali people, um, which is like the right market for people who listen to your music as well. So, yeah. And I think there's several dates there as well. So that, that should be um, super fun. What are, What's um, a song that you're really looking forward to kind of performing um, to a live audience? Um I don't I don't really know actually. I just want to perform the whole album, but <laughs> yeah, I can't really say um You're really excited about this captive audience. <laughs> like, yeah, I'm not gonna I, let you go. I, I mean more about the song. I think it's the mm -hmm. performance side of things. Oh, okay. That's what I'm more excited about because before um you know, like I said before, we were still we were still learning. We were yeah. a novice, you know, we were still learning about music and we didn't know like what kind of performance to give. Mm -hmm. But I think now going into it, we're more like, okay, we got dancers. Yeah. We got like, um, we've got a bigger team, you know, we can, we can give a bit more than before. Oh my God. I'm so excited. Yeah. We're going to be like moving, dancing, you know? Oh so my God. Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. I'm, ju I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm just picturing like, what are you going to be wearing? Cause you know, your fashion, I mean, whenever I see this, you know, the group of uh, the Metanoia squad, uh -huh. um, I always think, oh my God, you know, you always have like the most nicest thing that you're wearing and so on for <laughs> music videos. And I always think, I wonder who picked it. I wonder if he picked it himself or if there's somebody who's actually kind of, I don't know, coaching you or styling you and so on. Yeah, no, um, we've got, we've got a few stylists, you know, yeah. um, but it's, it's thanks to my partner as well. You know, uh -huh. she's helped me a lot, like uh, develop, you know, yeah. my style and everything. I used to just wear trackies, you know, I didn't really care about these things until uh, my partner showed me like, you know, okay, this is what you should be wearing in a music video. This is what you should be doing. Uh -huh. This is more presentable. Yeah. Even though if you're not like that in real life, you have to play the part in your music video. Oh, wow. Yeah. So Gosh. that was, that was something very important, you know, that yeah. it, like she, you know, she used to tell me like, what are you going to do? Just hold a guitar? You're going to wow. just like, just stand there and sing? No, you got to play the part. You got to act the part. You got to be the part. You have a little Chris Jenner. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, I really liked uh, the music video for um, Morituki Kaho. I think you looked amazing there. Oh, thank that was you. with Vijay, you know? Yes. Oh, yeah. That looked really good. That yeah. was like done really well. Thank you. Thank you. Um, but yeah, like even Dai, Dai Navana. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I know when I was good too. So I think that was really good. You must have a lots of people who send their love your way <laughs> um yeah you can say you can say that yeah yeah, yeah. from all spectrums I, I i i like to believe like you know yeah, yeah men then, women and and so yeah, on yeah of course yeah. um it's, it's all love you know it's all good um it's all organic as well um mm -hmm. it's nice to see people you know appreciating the music mm. um someone from the uk being here you know getting love from different countries around the world for me it's it's big mm -hmm. you know just even doesn't have to be a million or a thousand even five people or ten people means a lot yeah to me you know just having five faithful listeners and followers is a lot to me yeah you know it just gives me that little push okay i can do it for these five people you know yeah it's just it's just one of those things you know yeah equally and it's been so great to see like you continue and be consistent with it with okay. with music mm. but then also to see you evolve as an artist mm. um i think that's that's been really incredible um but also i i, I must ha um ask uh you know the earlier part of you in in terms of your your eyes in life um there was a, there were quite a few songs um well not few i think there were at least two songs that um sampled really popular nepali pop songs mm. um how did that play about? Was that completely fine? Or, you know, there was a bit of a, um, 
the 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 original singers of these music you know of these songs um sometimes they would have different feelings about uh you know when artists co- when emerging artists covered their songs and so on and yeah. it's a very gray area yeah. do you get what i mean yeah. and um <clears throat> because like we see songs being sampled and sometimes that's how you end up discovering like one huge example is hung up by madonna uh, because she sampled abba song gimme gimme but nikki Kiko Bata saying that was for in Hong Up, and I only found out later on. But that was like you know this city, and and that's when I think that's the beauty of recreation and reimagining new things. Absolutely. But equally, um, in the in the Nepali spectrum of things, I realize that a lot of the times it doesn't quite deliver like that as well. Yeah. 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 I think it's it's really, and I don't want to make this like a bad thing. You know, it's mm-hmm. really down to the artist's mentality as well. You know how they want to take it. If someone did a cover of my song. In all honesty, I would be really happy. Mm. I would be really happy that this person has uh, took my song and did a different take on it. You know, I'll, I'll be really happy. I don't know. It depends on the type of sound that they do as well. Yeah. If it really resonates with me, I'll be really happy. You know? mm. But I don't know. I think um, with, the, with the samplings, I don't know which song you're talking about. But was it with uh, um, Harple or was it with uh, all these? I think... I- Ow, ow, no. Oh, is that the that's a weird, yeah. So, ow, ow, no. Yeah, I like, met I met uh, Nima Rumba. I'm, yeah. a, I'm a huge fan of Nima Rumba. I met him in person, and he mm-hmm. said like, I really love your take. Oh, okay. Yeah, I got oh, that's a, good. Yeah, I, I got a really yeah. positive feedback, you know, from that. And with Harpal, I think um, I did message a uh, uh, Dai, and he mm-hmm. said like, he said he likes the sound, but he, this is when like I I switched up, you know, because mm-hmm. he did say like, Bai, you need to do original music. Uh, okay. And that's when I was like, yes, you are right. You know, coming from someone who's already done it. Yeah. Just saying that kind of gave me that push. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to do this. All right. And then that's when Time Chenna came out. Yeah. After, you know, that that song. And then I was like, okay. Oh, I mean, that's pretty good. That's yeah, pretty good. It, it, um, I, I was just kind of ex- expressing. I did not know if that conversation had even taken place. Uh-huh. But I was just saying it because um, that continues. And I know that for a lot of um, uh, emerging artists, it's... It's you know you have to rely on something that's sometimes a hit get yeah, and then bring your own to it and so on and sometimes that works great yeah do you get what I mean yeah, because of like course. Harpal when you think about it that was released back in two thousand two two thousand three so a lot of young generation Zs won't um, have listened to it yeah but if they listen to yours that's how you know back and. That's why, you know, anyways, that's another conversation. <laughs> I was going to say, like, re- you know, uh, remakes are such a wonderful thing. Yes. Um, and then Time Turner came out. Mm-hmm. And um, I'm not so switched on with a lot of music stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, but I heard murmurs, like, in terms of, you know, could it have been too inspired from certain uh, music and so on? Um, and, you know, are you aware, like, you know, these things are happening or these kind of ideas are form, uh, forming f- from the audience and so on. Um. Welcome to A Star. Your complete financial solution. The A stands for first class service and the star relates to you. Our most important clients. We are a team of whole market advisors with more than 10 years of excellent service. Serving nationwide, we specialized in home mortgages and remortgages, wills and estate planning, residential sales and lettings, property management, real estates, insurances and pensions. For both personal and business financial advices, please feel free to contact us for consultant. We look forward to working with you. A Star Financial Solution. Making your move memorable. This episode of Action with Podcast is brought to you by our gold partner, A-Star Financial Solutions UK, who'll support you on your journey to expand your property portfolio. Thanks to our silver partner, TapTap Send. With great rates, zero fee, and instant transfers, sending money to Nepal has never been easier. Use the code Action 10 for a £10 bonus. Download the app today, tap, tap and send now. Big mention to our silver partner, New Luxme Jewelers, home to a stunning range of jewelry collection and timeless pieces from the heart of Aldershot. Our bronze partners, Nepal Authentic Dining, where delicious Nepali food is served at Shepherd's Bush and Boston Manor. And our bronze partner, Nepali Music Festival UK 2022, taking place at the Harrow Leisure Centre on December 16 with Trishna Gurung, Ekdev Limbu, Sabin Rai and the Pharaoh. Enjoy the episode. 
Um, yes, absolutely. I, I know like these things happen. You know, people mm -hmm. love to compare you with other artists and stuff. But before you actually even become the artist that you are, you know, you take inspirations from other artists and yeah. you, you might have similarities, you know. Even I think even one of these artists, big artists said that, you know, Kendrick said, you know, you're going to, he used to take inspirations from different artists, but now taking all that inspiration, mm -hmm. he's become his own artist. Yeah. You know, that's, that is, that is important. I think you should take inspiration. As an artist, I take inspirations from other people. Mm -hmm. I can't just come up with some random stuff that's going to pop right now. You have to take inspirations from other artists and make it your own. Mm. That's the whole beauty of it. You know, people don't realize it, but that's the whole beauty of being an artist. You take inspirations. Yeah. You know, I'm sure like back in the days, all these, I don't want to say anything bad again. <laughs> yeah. But I'm sure all of these other artists that were, you know, uh, legendary artists, they mm -hmm. take inspirations from other people. As yeah, well. of course. Of course, right? Yeah. You make it your own. And that's the whole point of it. Yeah. I think a lot of things, you know, in, in the world, it's been majority of the things have been done. So it's just another version, another version until you get to, like you said, exactly. to that point where you've created a version that is now more you and somebody else will take from it. And in a way, that's an honor, Yeah. right? It's just like, we know majority of the movies are going to be pretty much the same because, exactly. you know, it's a majority people will always do the whole love story thing and so on. Um, you know, I think we just have to kind of like, accept that too but sometimes i feel like we expect to like we expect greatness from the beginning yeah and it's like the person is on the journey they're getting there but you can't expect like you know greatness from like the first yeah record yeah you gotta yeah. you gotta look at your beginnings you know and mm -hmm. everything where it's it's important i think with music with all these creative stuff like i'm sure you notice this as well every probably every 10 years they get recycled mm -hmm. you know they mm -hmm. come back again well, yeah. In terms of fashions, fashion as well, you get your skinny jeans, your yeah. your baggy jeans. They'll come back again. Cargo and all that kind exactly. of stuff. You know, styles come back, music comes back. You know, everything. They mm. all they'll come back again. Mm -hmm. Just people just forget. You know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um. So in terms of like uh, talking about fashion, um, is there any kind of individual that kind of you, uh, tap into or think, oh, this is the kind of look that I want to create or look that I want to follow? Um. Not, not really. I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't yeah. say that. You know. Yeah. But whatever I see online that I like. Yeah. I'd be like, all right, I like this. I'm gonna try this. If it looks good, let's go with it. It's nothing that like you know. I want to be like this person, or uh -huh. you know, I want to look like this person. Because I, of the look that you had in Django with the, I don't know what the, what those tops are called with these kind of like slits and so on. That was really cool. Yeah, it was it was quite cool to be honest. <laughs> it's quite cool. I mean, that really set you apart. I mean, you've been. I mean, the whole look has set you apart for a while. But I I feel like even within the video, when there's so many people competing for your visual attention, yeah. Um, you know, that was a very standout kind of thing. So I thought that was pretty cool. Yeah, I, you know what? <laughs> All these outfits that I get, uh -huh. they're actually not even expensive. They're yeah. actually very, very cheap. They're very affordable. I just uh -huh. get them from ASOS, you know. Uh -huh. If it works, it works. Yeah. If it doesn't, it doesn't. It's just one of those things, you know. Mm -hmm. You just got to have an eye for it. And I think um, that's obviously due to my partner as well. <laughs> yeah. 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 It's just trial and error. Same mm. with music, trial and error. Same with fashion, trial and error. Hi, the perks of having a good team behind you, they get you, you get them, and, you know, you end up creating a really bomb product. Yeah, it's 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 cool. Uh, you know, these um, this project that we, we have, that we the music that we do and the vision that we have, you know, um, I'm so happy that, you know, people around me believe it. And, you know, even if they don't, you know, get the type of paycheck that they want, mm -hmm. but there is something there that you've put in and it goes into your portfolio. It goes into, you know, all the credit stuff and everything that will help you in your future as well. Mm -hmm. People need to realize that it's not just all about money. Yeah. Um, it's also about actually putting in the effort of doing this project. And then I'm sure somewhere along in the future, this will all add up as an experience for you mm -hmm. and you will become, you know, you'll find a better job or you'll find a better opportunity. Yeah. You know, these, this is all important. This is all important. Uh, being a creative you have to do something you can't just expect a big paycheck or big mm. you know opportunity unless you do this first mm. that's what i believe but yeah no completely i think and you touched a really interesting point there like adding building adding building your portfolio is one thing yeah. um for you like a question personally to you do you see yourself getting to um a point in your life i'm not even sure if this is what you want though but getting to a point in life where you do music full time and um you get to a stage where you completely um are sustained by music is that some is that what you're working towards or is that um i think uh at this age i'm being really realistic you know i know i'm not going to be doing music for the rest of my life this is the sad part you know mm -hmm. i can't be doing music 
for the next 40, 50 years or like, you know, 20 years, I, I won't be doing that. My body won't be able to do it as well. Uh, 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 no, I'm sure you can. I'm, I'm like, I'm not <laughs> like in that way. I'm just saying yeah. like, I'm probably going to be very tired. Uh, I'm going to be very tired and I'm going to be eventually really tired. And that's the sad part of it because people are going to have problems down the line and whatever. Mm. I'm going to have problems probably down the line and I won't be able to do music. I'm probably going to have kids, you know? Mm. And what I really want to do is I want to give that to the future, you know? Mm. Give that to the kids, the opportunities, whatever, you know? I'll probably just want to help the community you know, this is that's the whole point of of this label, just mm-hmm. helping the youth. You know, right now I'm doing it. Maybe ten years down the line, I'll stop and I'll help somebody else. That's probably what I want to do. You know, more yeah. just helping this community, just music. I know it sounds like thinking about you know. <laughs> mm. No, I think it's really good. I think because everything that we do, it's kind of like building blocks, and the the blocks that we add, it may not be like, I mean, the wall that these bricks, whatever. Um, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know where I'm am going I, am I with confusing this. you. <laughs> no, I don't know where I'm going with this analogy. I'm just saying whatever that you're helping build, you know, it might not benefit you um in the long run, but it will end up creating this I think bona fide star one day yeah. who will break the barriers, go beyond the Nepali community in the UK and then even, you know, be be our version of like the the big um I have no examples right now, but like, a, you know, the yeah. British, next it, British yeah. musician and so on. The thing is that I can't predict these things. So mm. I can't really say it like that yeah. right now. I can't really predict it because this, this group could go different ways. You know, we mm. might think of a different idea, but that's the sort of vision I have. You know, yeah. this is my idea of it, you know, because mm-hmm. there's so many ways that you can take, you know, we've got, we've helped build all this experience together. You never know. We might do something different. We might be an artist still. Mm-hmm. Or we might have, we might actually be with yeah. somebody else. We might be managing somebody else. Yeah, yeah. So it's just one of those things, you know. With LA, do you manage them, or is it a case of they're just under metanoia? Um. So I'm not really in charge of LA. All right, these oh, guys okay. are just like my brothers, so I yeah. can't really say much about it. But I think Jay is more in hands with them. Okay. Yeah, but me, I'm just sort of like a brother to them. I just help them out whenever they need me. That's that's all I do. Yeah. Yeah. Because I'm not ready for that responsibility yet. Maybe <laughs> five, ten years down the line, I might do it when I stop music, you know. Mm-hmm. But, so one question I wanted to ask is, you know, when you as a uh, musician, you know, when you kind of come up with the concept, writing and so on, that's, that's, you own it. But then there are so many other things that are part of, you know, what you do, whether it's like going to events, performing, or um, sometimes, you know, add opportunities and various, or interviews come out. And not all of them is actually quite fun, you know? Yeah. Quite, a, quite a lot of them are kind of tedious, tiring, but you just need to do it because you need to like talk about something and, and it's that kind of two-way relationship that you need to kind of continue as well. What is one thing that you really enjoy out of this whole, you know, um, thing as a creator and a musician? And what is one thing that you do not look forward to? Um, what I really enjoy is mm-hmm. this whole creative thing. It's just the finishing product when we finish a music video or a, a music a concept that we have and it, it just finish it's there and it's done that's the most like best feeling ever yeah you know you're like i can't wait to show this to everybody else you know and when people listen to him and they like it the reaction that you get it just you know it gives you more confidence you know you want to do a bit more more yeah. more you want to keep chasing that that rush you know that when that music is complete um that's the best side of it. The bad side, what I would say, hmm. is now I don't want to. I'm not trying to say anything bad <laughs> yeah. to you, but interviews. Are you gonna that's exactly that? what I was gonna say. <laughs> okay, but, let's wrap it up now. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it all depends on the person, you know. Yeah. Uh, the reason why I came here because I know you, Lex. Right, mm-hmm. I'm a bit more comfortable with you than a lot of people because mm-hmm. a lot of people, when they ask me questions, they ask some really, really stupid questions. Mm-hmm. You know, like. Um, you know, do you have a girlfriend or do you have this? Like those kind of. Well, I was gonna ask you that, but you said like, "My, your partner." So I'm just partner, like, "There yeah. you go." That's, but, that's you know, my it's question. A, it's, a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's yeah. a question that it's just yeah. like, you know, it's just like, it's just one yeah. of those like, like what do you call it? Um, question and answer type yeah. of you know interviews. You know, this is more yeah. natural. I like uh-huh. it. You know, it's nice. It's it's more organic. I get to express it in my mm. own way. You know, it's yeah. nice. No, I, no, I completely like understand. Like when I when I watch. Um, 
videos of many kind of musicians and so on. I'm just like, oh my God. <laughs> yeah. And I just feel for them like, oh, like it must be quite tiring because sometimes, you know, when you're doing back to back things, it's like you're largely answering the same type of questions as well, right? Yeah. Um, so that's why I try not to get too deep into, you know, like certain things. Um, yeah. I'm, I'm so happy that you, you know, you did your research. That's the main thing. You did mm-hmm. your research. A lot of people don't even do their research and they don't even know how to pronounce my name. Yeah. That's yeah. the most frustrating thing. You listen yeah. to my music, but you don't even know my name. You don't yeah. even know the group. That's yeah. that's disrespectful for me. I know? think people invite, um, I've seen that happen a lot. People invite you for an interview and so on. Not, not saying you, but like um, in general. And then they're like, tell us about how did you start? And it's almost like you're telling them. <laughs> yeah. Like it's like, like at least know something so yeah. we can have a two-way thing rather than you know what was the most weird yeah. interview I had? I think it was with VMAG. Uh-huh. So I was interviewing my own boys. Oh yeah, I saw that. And I, was think- <laughs> I, was, I was trying to think of it very positively. I was, I was I was like wow they gave them the ownership but I feel wow. like they're being lazy that's being lazy <laughs> to be honest like uh. I don't know what was going through their head but whatever it is that was not a good experience for me because yeah. I was just like I came alright we're gonna have an interview yeah that's cool yeah. and I go in there and they tell me oh you're interviewing yourself I'm like what the hell is going on <laughs> yeah no but like equally I um, I know that you were there when we were having a chat with Jay. Um, yeah. And I had said, no, eventually, you know, I'm going to bring all of you guys. Yeah. But it's going to have to be like, you know, solo. Yeah. <laughs> solo. And the thing with it, it's like, you know, being part of the UK Nepali community, which, you know, we all are. We've seen each other at various stages, whether it's like at UK Nepali events or as as we mentioned, various contests and so on. And without, and I don't think we've ever actually sat down like this and had a conversation. But... I personally feel like, you know, okay, I, I know where to kind of talk, which points to go in from and so on. So yeah. um, that's so exactly think... why I'm here because I'm more comfortable with you. Mm. <laughs> yeah, it's it's nice. It's nice. And I appreciate you bringing me here. Yeah, yeah. no, no. I'm, I'm glad that you came as well. So the other thing that I wanted to ask is like, um, with, uh, you know, music is such a big thing and it's such a minefield and there's so many genres, so many kind of different countries uh, to get inspired from as well. Um, what is one thing that you feel like, you know what, this is a direction that would be like a goal? Like, you know, I would love to kind of tap into this genre or this style of singing. Because I felt like... Um, Earlier on, like you said, there was that kind of pop because back then it was more like, you know, just kind of European, Western, American stuff. And yeah. then there was like the um, the more Eastern flavors as well. There's the Nepali. And now right now you're really, r and bop is very much centered around like the British beats and British music, right? Yeah. Um, but then there's like, you know, right... The what is it called? I completely forgot. Like even Beyonce and so on have that beats going on. The current is the it current ha- album, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. I haven't listened to it properly, but it's an interesting album. Uh, I've, yeah, I've listened to a few songs. And clearly, you know, uh, you know, just talking about Beyonce, like in the past few albums has been very um, um, p- kind of powerful in terms of that uh, activism mode and so on. But now I think like you know she and maybe Drake as well have really listened to what are what's the beat for 2022, and they've really tapped into it, right? Yeah, yeah. They so have. it's it's all it's interesting, like. Like, do you have any kind of like, oh, I'd love to kind of get, bring in flavors of, I don't know, different parts of... Yeah, I think um, right now, currently, I'm listening to a lot of Nigerian music. I was going to say Africa, but now, now you hit <laughs> yeah. it. It's uh-huh. Specifically Nigerian. Yeah. Really, really interesting. Um, the beats are completely different. Mm-hmm. It's something new. Like, I've, I've been really, I'm, I'm really like studying it at the moment and seeing what we can do. Like, right now, like me and Jay, we're not, I wouldn't really say like, it's British, British, but it's more fusion. Mm-hmm. Um I've spoke to I spoke about this like even before we started this whole time China thing. We need to move with fusion music, mm-hmm. mixing in two different cultures, like two different styles, and bringing in something different is important. I think it just kind of brings a different side of it and a new concept as well. Because mm. me and Jay, when we were doing time China, we were like back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. It was not just him doing the whole verse; it was actually me as well. It was back and forth, back and forth. Right now, we're doing the same thing as well. Mm. It's just fusion, but a different kind of genre. I think the idea of fusion is just beautiful, you know, for me. Mm-hmm. It's just like creating something different. It's just, it's just nice, you know. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I feel like the people who, the people who like like Time China, that sort of back and forth, yeah. <laughs> will miss it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that's why we need to go see you guys live. And that's when we can get to exactly. relive those hits as well. Exactly. Which is, you know, I think Time China and... Are you in Kansi? Kansi? No, so I'm not in Kansi. No. Oh, okay. Sorry. <laughs> but I, I think... Because a lot of... 
the songs came around in a, in a very short amount span of time around that period but there was like so many songs being dropped yeah um so it's kind of hard to track who was in what yeah um but you know it was such a moment for i think that kind of genre of music um because it really captured um the attention of so many people mm. yeah did, did, how how did that make you feel um it was you know what it's <laughs> it it was nice um i think i was really um surprised by the um the res- you know the response from people it took me by surprise uh to the point where my instagram was boo, 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 you know yeah. people were tagging me and stuff i was in nepal people kept tagging me and i was just like i actually deactivated my account it was too really? much for me yeah i'm not used to that kind of stuff uh-huh. i've even told um you know my my group like i'm not used to this social media thing cuz it's completely new back when i was just a normal singer i only had like probably 200 followers mm-hmm. and i wouldn't get that kind of you know my phone kept ringing with notification it would never happen and then when that happened it it took me by it took me by surprise you know i was really i felt a bit pressured mm-hmm. like i felt i had to respond to everyone yeah that's the sort of thing that happened that's why i was like that's it private deactivate just focus on the music that's it and then after on i realized like it is important to be active in social media and it it, it took time you know yeah. it, it took time to kind of switch to that mode <laughs> yeah i think it's a, it's a bit of a kind of um uh, a, a a positive battle i would like to say a positive battle that like you know you need that 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 part of you needs to be present mm. even though you might not you know yeah. and sometimes there's different ways some people have people who manage it or some people have like other personal profiles and so on that that is much more like genuine to them and one would be just like this is the work me yeah. this is the real me with like the very few people that actually know me and so on yeah. um but i think to get there on that journey can be quite tricky for individuals as well right yeah. um are you, are you do you find yourself in a much better place now in terms of juggling the kind of social media side of things as well as yeah. you know, who you are mm. i think yeah definitely i would say even um just everything around me helped me even my job actually because um before i was working as a chef and i was quite anti social mm-hmm. and then moving on to sales with music everything came along and i think in time it just got better i i started becoming more myself yeah i i was not comfortable with speaking to people that i don't know because in the vlogs i look like i'm such a happy go guy yeah but then some random guy just you know tries to have a joke with me and i'm just like who is this guy you know uh-huh. and i just you know it it feels uncomfortable i'm not used to that kind of stuff you know mm. but i think in time the more i travel like i said the more i do these things mm. get better in time right yeah yeah are you a solo child yes i am uh, <laughs> well, interesting. Why, why just a question <laughs> <laughs> just guest yeah good guess interesting. <laughs> yeah but no definitely i think um sometimes when you're in a group it's much more easier for you to let the other person take that lead in terms of speaking and so on right yeah. and then um i mean that reduces the opportunities for you to uh put yourself out there and have this dialogue and so on and when you have a right kind of conversation with somebody then you suddenly realize that actually you know what it can be all right and so on so hopefully um there'll be more opportunities like that along the way um when you guys were in nepal um you guys performed in countless places did various kind of ad spots and so on um what um not just like limited to nepal but what gig or event has been the most memorable hmm this is a difficult one i think um why were you so drunk that you forgot everything <laughs> i mean i got I got food poison but it was quite memorable. <laughs> like you oh know, no. it, was, it was quite nice. In India it was quite fun actually. I enjoyed that India. That sounds really tough. Yeah, India was nice. Um Nepal was nice too. I think Nepal and India definitely was was probably the best I'd say. Mm-hmm. Uh I can't sort of pick yeah. and choose between those but I think Nepal and India was a really really good tour experience for me. Yeah. Doing 7 8 cities mm-hmm. like in a month's time. I don't know if it was a month's time or two months time. That's uh, like a rock star life. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it was I mean the pictures and everything looked like, you know, you guys were literally owning everything and you guys did. And but there were quite a f- there was quite a big entourage, right? And I think wasn't there like Coco Coco man and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Um in the thing. We yeah. had Zack, Coco, uh Jemima, uh mm-hmm. me and Jay obviously. Um but yeah, it was a it was a good experience, but I wouldn't say it was all positive. 
You know, mm. it's it's that's that's wrong. You know, to yeah. say tour is hectic. You have to be on schedule. You have to be very very like smart about things. You know, because yeah. there are times where you fuck up. You know? Yeah, there are times where we missed flights. We missed. Oh my god. Yeah, we missed flights. There was even a time where like we we were going back home. Uh huh. Um, because of the flo- of the fog, the plane didn't land. So we went back to um, we went back mm-hmm. and then we had to take the car. It was like a twelve hour journey. Oh gosh, it's yeah. hectic, right? Those are yeah. the things that people don't really so tiring. Yeah, it's it's crazy. It's not fun sometimes. Mm-hmm. It is fun when you get on stage and interact. Yeah, but the legwork, the, all the you know the traveling and stuff, it's hectic. Yeah, but it's so amazing that you got to see or uh, be part of that uh, world at such a kind of um, interesting time in your lives because a lot of people who are not that part of the world, we can't even like think about it, right? <laughs> yeah. It's like, it's beyond our imagination. Yeah. Um, and, you know, and you're so lucky to have that moment again back with Australia. Yes. Um, because, you know, music or anything that we do in life, you know, there's never a guarantee. Um, and we don't know how, how long this will continue on for. Um, but uh, I know for a fact that, you know, it will continue on for many years for you guys because the more that you guys create, the more iterations or different versions of you guys that you become. I believe the more different part of audiences that you will kind of tap into and um yeah yeah you guys have so many fans like all over the world so um thank you even in india too yeah i didn't know but yeah i realized we have a lot of fans in india yeah, <laughs> yeah it's nice it's nice you know it's nice to see i think people. in a way the group group dynamic helps because there's somebody for everyone does that make sense? What like, way? because you guys are in a group, there's like someone for everyone. Oh, okay. yeah, yeah. Like, if you want to, yeah. if you want to say it like that, then yeah. yeah, definitely. If you don't like this guy, then you can go for that. Yeah. No. <laughs> I, like, no, because like I feel like um, you know, uh, because you have that kind of mysterious, slightly more kind of shy or reserved kind of persona, and yeah. whereas you know some people are slightly more um. I guess forward, you know, they're, they're like the ones who are kind of like always talking and so on. So I feel like in that way, it's kind of like a boy band, but obviously you guys aren't a boy band. No. Um, so they want to go. Yeah. Nah, yeah. like, yeah, I like being a bit laid back, but yeah, yeah definitely different, different type yeah. of people. Yeah. Um, as you touch touring, um, we often hear that touring is the moment to actually make money uh, as a creative person, as a musician and so on. Yes. Um, you guys have worked with event organizers in really different parts of the world, including um, the UK. I'm not sure. Did you guys have a show in America? I felt like there was a show in America once. Yeah, we did. We did. Uh, me and Jay, I think the first time we went there was me and Jay. Okay. Um, at that time, we we finished time china but we just played it out there uh, had a good response and um uh, the second time we went uh, was uh it was me jay and simon mm-hmm, mm-hmm. so we just went there twice but yeah it was all good the vibe is just like you know it's like they get you mm-hmm. you know because in the uk america it's sort of similar i would say yeah not very similar but sort of similar but you know it's nice it's cool i like it i think yeah. america is a really nice place you know yeah and and so when it comes to like negotiating dealing with event organizers and so on do you feel that you know you as artists you as group of artists growing out there you guys get a good um you know you guys are represented you guys are valued um or is it a tough act in terms of uh the whole kind of conversation piece uh ironing out the detail ironing out the kind of finding good details and prices to get you I think, on the uh, road I think when we first initially started this traveling around the world, we were very inexperienced how to deal with things mm-hmm. um, because it was just hard when you don't know what you're diving into. You want to go on tour, but we forget about all the important stuff, you know, uh, dealing with the money side of things, you know, the flights and all these visa stuff. You don't know, you know, in the beginning, you're all learning and stuff. So those are the most difficult part. It is not easy if an organizer is not like on time, if they're a bit late, it affects us as well. It affects mm. everyone, you know. It's just sort of like a ripple effect, you know. If one person does something wrong or if one person is late, it affects everything. You know, we let's say we book the flights and the visas aren't ready. Mm. You know, that's going to be a problem, isn't it? So those are the things that were very difficult. The visa, the money side of things. Mm. And, you know, my advice to other people, take the money first and then fly. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I feel like that's, that should always be the case. Absolutely. I think that's when, when yeah. And sometimes you only learn by bad experiences yeah. um but hopefully uh you know one bad experience can then uh get you on the path as well yeah uh, because there are a lot of people who are not so great 
um, at kind of, you know, delivering and, and so on too. So um, that, that's a good word of advice. Yeah. Um, so three videos out from uh, RN Bop. Mm -hmm. um, will there be more videos or what's the kind of um, the, the, the journey for the album at the moment? So definitely more videos. Absolutely more videos. Definitely. I can't say how many and how many months and days because of the lifestyle that we live is mm -hmm. you know it's you need time but definitely more videos we are not stopping we're gonna keep doing videos you know uh, just continue definitely more and more maybe a new album maybe that's exciting yeah definitely we're, we're not gonna stop like i think that's the main thing you know as a musician you shouldn't stop just keep doing it so yeah, yeah. definitely more and one more question about the album so Iron Bob is uh, a collaborative piece between i, I guess uh, jay and you but obviously the wider team is always there yeah. um is this a is this a permanent thing that will the next album be a collaborative one as well or you know it's it's a case of we'll see oh i, I well it all depends uh -huh. right but it's definitely a permanent thing okay. but we are still separate artists mm -hmm. but jyb is a separate different thing yeah it's all about just having fun yeah right i might want to do different types of songs so that kind of falls into a different genre but this yeah. jyb is R and Bob. It's a different kind of genre where you just want to have fun, just dance, mostly in the cars. These will be playing in the cars or like the clubs. It's more suitable for that kind of music. Yeah. So we just want to just leave it there, you know, J-A-Y-B. Okay. Just... So J-A-Y-B, the genre would be considered R and Bob. You know, that's the genre yeah. itself. So you as a person by yourself, if you were to like, let's say, uh, drop a single next week, um, just you and Black, which genre do you think you fit right now as a solo person? As a solo person, yeah. I think uh, maybe a bit more R and B, R and B pop, a little bit mm -hmm. more, I would say. But um, is that is that a side of you that we might see at some point? Yeah, definitely more mm -hmm. more Afro, more R and B, more Afro pop. You know, I, that's the sort of music that I like personally. Mm -hmm. I'm not really a rapper, mm -hmm. but this J A Y B, this R and Bop kind of let me express myself as a different you know artist that I can rap a little bit more. I'm not like a you know, this meaningful rapper or anything like that. I'm just saying how I feel about things, you know. You're being very modest here. <laughs> yeah, mm -hmm. it, it is the truth, you know. Mm. I, I can't rap battle with someone if someone dissed me. I'll probably just keep my mouth shut. But <laughs> <laughs> We all have different spaces for us to shine. Yes, <laughs> yes. of course. <laughs> um, and like along the way, you know, we've seen a lot of Nepali people, um, you know, do music, stop music, start music. And now we're seeing like, you know, s slowly different set of Nepali people kind of emerging, um, doing R&B, doing hip hop. Um, and I think that's that's mainly all I'm seeing. I'm not seeing like metal and so on. But, you know, some people who sing very, um, like very indie kind of slow pop songs as well. You know, that, that, yeah. that side of um, the thing is growing as yeah. well. What's your kind of take on views on like, you know, uh, like 10 years ago scene and the right now scene? 10 years ago scene. Uh, in the in the Nepalese community, I think I saw a lot more people singing covers. Yeah. Covers, holding the guitar. I used to be one of them. Uh -huh. I used to be one of them. Um, that was the sort of thing that was happening. But now I think there's more rappers coming out. Mm. A lot more rappers and a lot more... Um, Even like a female rapper. Yeah. yeah. I, I see a lot of like, you know, a lot of people who love like Bipul Chetri and they've become this different kind of artist. Mm. Like very similar to Bipul Dai, but like a bit more different, a bit more pop, yeah. you know, a bit more now, which is like, which is quite cool because he's like the sort of like the pioneer and then mm -hmm. people just came along you know yeah and then it's nice to see that you know people having their own take on that type of music and it's beautiful that's the whole point of you know music it's nice like mm. i see a lot more rappers a lot more like these folk singers it's it's just, it's just nice you know? yeah i think the space for everyone the space for everyone we just need to kind of like um hone our craft and like keep doing what we need to do and producing great stuff yes yeah um on that note um thank you so much for coming um <laughs> over and having a chat on the action with podcast um is there anything else that i have forgotten to ask you i feel like this, oh my god this sounds like a job inter interview question <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> okay. Is there anything that? Yeah. Have I missed anything? Or please no, no, feel no, free no. to kind yeah, it's, of it's add anything. Uh, no, no, no. You've uh, covered everything. It's calm. I mm. love it. It's nice. It's organic. Yeah. I love this. Yeah, I mean, because this is just a very momentary thing because, you know, life is ongoing. And yeah. I'm glad that I've caught you, uh, I've caught up with you in your even Black moment. And <laughs> maybe, you know, a few years down the line, it might be something else or it might just be the same even Black, but, you know, more learned, more experienced and so on because yeah. of, you know, that's what life does to us, right? Yeah, yeah. definitely. Like, um, when you're feeling down, what do you do? Like, w w what kind of gets you up and be like, you know what, living is great. Um, when I'm feeling down, yeah. When I'm when I'm really sh feeling shit, I go to the gym. Oh, okay. That's sort of my way of you know putting my frustrations out there. Like you know, s I don't listen to music when I feel bad. I actually uh -huh. just ah. Oh, so you're like you're without music, gym. That's yeah, the sort kind of, of person. Yeah, like, if I'm really really like focused and I'm really really need to let my stress out. Yeah. No music, just gym. Um, but when I feel good about myself, I listen to music. Uh -huh. I want to experience music like that, not when I'm sad. You know? mm -hmm. yeah interesting yeah, i don't like being like depressed sad and my life is all that I, i'm not saying like that's wrong but i'm just yeah. saying i just don't like being that that's a sort of like just me mm -hmm. yeah i like uh, yeah. so what's your ha like in your happy moment like what song would be blasting through your happy headphones? moments yeah so back before when i was university so this is me jay zach you know we used to go uni and like mm -hmm. what we used to do was we just used to listen to loyal Oh, okay. These hoes ain't loyal. You know, like, it just used to like just, just sing stuff out, and it was it was just like uh -huh. just having fun. Yeah, right? yeah. Such a fun song, anyway. Yeah, yeah. it's quite fun. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Drink, you know, all that uni stuff, whatever. But yeah, that's that's the song that I I would play if I was like yeah, you know, vibing and stuff. Oh, <laughs> cute, cute. Um, any final words for people who are listening um to the podcast right now? Podcast. I'd I'd definitely say to a lot of creative um who's in sort of like the same situation as me like we're in the same boat you know we're in the same boat we're trying to go to the same place so don't think about money focus on being creative first and then mm. money will come yeah yeah it's amazing well thank you so much you've been back for giving us your time sharing your story um and yeah uh it's it's been a lovely lovely conversation and i hope you have more amazing moments ahead whether it's interviews or lots of music videos and <laughs> the creative stuff as well <laughs> yeah. i can't wait to see um you know the performances and so on what you're gonna wear how you're gonna <laughs> dance and so on so you're such a delight to watch so yeah. thank, thank you. you thank you Hi. thank you very much this episode is brought to you by our gold partner a star financial solutions uk silver partners tap tap send and new Luxme jewelers Bronze Partners, Nepal Authentic Dining, and Nepali Music Festival UK 2022. Thank you for listening to Ik Chin With.